optimism is really about having a positive mindset about the future. So do you see the cartoon right here? <laughs> Stop being so negative. A real optimist would have said, be positive. As Winston Churchill says, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity and an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. But the question is, is the key to happiness having low expectations? We've all heard this before, right? And having low expectations is not optimism, right? That's really pessimism. We hear that all the time. So what do you think? Well, what we know is that optimism does have some downsides. And it's something that's called um, the optimism bias. And you can learn more about it if you watch um, on the TED Talk. There's a woman named Tally Sharrett, S-H-A-R-O-T, and she talks a lot about the optimism bias. But to give you an example, if you ask 100 people in a room how they rank in terms of their driving abilities, low, average, or high, 80% of the people would say that they're above average. So 80% of the people would plot themselves in this yellow, higher area of the bell curve which we know is statistically impossible. You can't have 80% 80 of people being above average. So in certain types of activities, we tend to be overly optimistic about our behavior. And that can sometimes lead to um, riskier behavior. So then is it a downside to be optimistic? Should we be more realistic or more cautious? Well, I would argue that um, for something that we call flexible optimism, which means that um, we know that there are benefits of optimism. We know that sometimes optimism can have its downsides. So actually choosing when to be optimistic is good, is a good thing. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but some of the benefits of optimism are what you see here. So optimists tend to feel better than pessimists. In other words, they have more positive feelings. And the reason why they do is because they have an explanatory style, which means they explain the world in a way that enhances their self-esteem as opposed to decreases their self-esteem. Second, optimists anticipate more. So they think more about the future in a positive way. And um, what the research has shown is that anticipation of upcoming positive events is just as fun and beneficial for us in terms of our, our well-being and our emotions than actually experiencing those positive events. So since optimists are anticipating more, they get to benefit both from the positive experience itself, but also for the anticipation. And finally, optimists tend to try harder because they are optimistic about the, about the future. And by trying harder, what ends up happening is that they practice more often and they oftentimes succeed more. So I'm just going to go through a couple examples of what we what we talked about in terms of this explanatory style. So just imagine this. You just landed a great new job. Is your first thought, well, I got this job because I'm talented, I always nail interviews, and I'm generally a likable person. Or are you the kind of person who would say, mm, I got this job because there are only a few applicants, and this time I happen to be well prepared? And sometimes I can put on charm in interviews. So we see on the left, we have the optimist. And on the right, we have the pessimist. This is how they think about a positive event that just happened differently. Optimists, when positive events happen, they attribute them to themselves. They say, yeah, this happened because I'm great. I deserve it. I'm smart. <laughs> I'm talented. Whereas a pessimist attributes those positive events to external things. Well, there weren't that many candidates. Well, I happened to do well this time. Now, if something negative happens, uh, your car broke down on your way to work. Is your first thought? Well, this is unfortunate, but I knew the car was in need of a service. We all have tough days sometimes. Or do you respond by saying, oh, this always happens to me at the worst possible time. I'm such an unlucky person. So here we have again. Optimist on the left, pessimist on the right. Subtle but different ways of thinking about this negative event that just happened. Explanatory style, pessimists, when negative events happen, they internalize them. 
they say, oh, this always happens to me. It's always about me, right? They make it about them, them and it's a global, internal, and stable thing. Optimists, on the other hand, when negative events occur, they attribute them to external things. So, oh, I knew my car needed a service. And they also don't make them stable or specific. So they really just don't attribute negative events to their own being. And what, these, what this explanatory style does for the optimist is it protects their self-esteem, right? Because they're attributing positive events to who they are as a person, but negative events to external things. And pessimists, unfortunately, do the opposite. So when negative things happen, they blame it on themselves. And when positive events happen, they blame it, they give the credit to someone else, essentially. So here you see, uh, we have Michael Jordan. And I love this quote because I think it's just the, really the epitome of optimism. He talks about, you know, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career, lost almost 300 games on 26 occasions. I've been entrusted to take the game winning shot and I missed. I failed over and over again in my life. And that's why I've succeeded. So a pessimist who would attribute these uh, missed 9,000 shots and 300 games, well, a pessimist probably wouldn't have gotten this far, but a pessimist who would have attributed these, um, these kind of losing or failing situations to themselves personally would have been more likely to give up, whereas an optimist is someone who can persevere and get better and better, and that oftentimes leads towards success. So as we know, optimists, um, typically, they deal better with adversity than pessimists do. And we can call this post-traumatic growth. <laughs> so when difficult situations happen, optimists tend to grow from them, as opposed to pessimists who might be held back from them. So in the end, um, optimists are generally more likely than pessimists to grow and end up being stronger and benefit from adversity. All right, the last piece of this is gratitude. So this is having a positive mindset about situations that occur in our past. And I think um, at least in US culture, uh, there tends to be um, a focus sometimes more on the complaining side than on the gratitude side, as you see in the cartoon here. And I love this quote by Cicero, that gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. So what is the definition of gratitude? It's really the feeling that occurs when a person attributes a benefit they've received to another person. And the interesting thing about gratitude is that it really, it's an emotion that occurs across many different cultures. And um, people experience it similarly across different cultures. Here you have here some quotes that you may run across when you are doing your reading of the Tao of Pooh. Do you really want to be happy? You can begin by being appreciative of who you are and what you've got. And then at the top, this piglet noticed that even though he had a very small heart, he could hold a rather, a rather large amount of gratitude. So I show this here. Um, I can't show the video during the webinar, but I'd encourage um, you to check it out. Joshua Bell, he's a famous violinist. And he, um, he's a violinist that people would pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to go see and can't even get tickets to because he's so good. And he did this experiment once where he went into a subway and really just dressed very humbly. He looked like he could have been even a homeless person. And he just sat in the subway and started playing. But he's you know, this world known violinist. And so of course, what he was playing was phenomenal, amazing. And they have videos that you can see online of people who the majority of the people just walk right by him. They don't even acknowledge him or notice that he's even there. And it's, it's really incredible to see. Um, and then of course you see a couple people who actually do stop and notice. And I think the interesting thing about this video is it shows some of the overlap between gratitude and mindfulness, because in a way um, being mindful is what can allow us to be grateful for things. So those people who were able to be mindful of the present moment and to realize um, instead of being on, on autopilot and trying to run and get to work, they actually heard the music and heard how beautiful it was and they stopped. And that gave them an opportunity to really feel grateful for it. There's also another great TED talk I would recommend by Louis Schwartzberg. 
and um, he does uh, slow filming photography of nature. And again, it shows this relationship between mindfulness and gratitude, because when you see these, these videos of uh, these beautiful flowers um, blooming over time, it's, it's truly gorgeous. And for me, it brings up feelings of gratitude uh, about the world around me. But it's also, um, also a way to practice mindfulness because it takes that, that presence to be able to appreciate the beauty. Um, so one of the ways that you can practice mindfulness is by simply checking in every day, three things that you're grateful for in this moment. So just take a minute right now, um, just give you a couple seconds to think about. You could right now just three things that you are grateful for on this day in this moment. something called gratitude journaling. And there's a lot of research um, on gratitude journaling. Um, the research is mixed in terms of the impact of this kind of journaling on well-being. But what we know from the research is that it certainly doesn't hurt us in terms of um, journaling every day about at least three things that we're grateful for. Um, and one of the ways to really have this impact your well-being regularly is to maybe not do it every day, but if you do it every couple days so that you're not bored by the activity, it doesn't become a rote thing to you. And also trying to think of new things every day to be grateful for. So really challenging yourself. And this can almost be a fun activity because, um, you know, after you've done this for a while, it can you know, really challenge you to think very, very specifically about people in your life or situations in your life that you're grateful for. We know that people who are grateful tend to have less negative emotions and more frequent positive emotions, such as feeling energized and alert and enthusiastic. And um, this is all really great in terms of well-being. We also know that um, feelings of gratitude have in, um, are associated with increased feelings of closeness, so building closer relationships with others. So in a way, gratitude can help you practice the happiness habit of relationships that we talked that Mark talked about earlier, um, because it helps us feel closer to others when we're focusing on the things that we're grateful for in them. And related to that, um, there's one other gratitude intervention <laughs> that we're going to be doing um, as an assignment in the class, and it's writing a letter of gratitude to a person who's changed your life. So. You'll be doing this later in the class, and um, I'll be interested to see how this, how these go for you and what your experience is like with them. And finally, I close by saying, <laughs> scholars can be useful and necessary in their own dull and amusing way. They provide a lot of information, but it's just that something more, and that something more was, is what life is really all about. And I love this quote. It's also from the Tao of Pooh, um, because it's really about you know, here's the information that we're giving you today, but how are you going to use it? And that's what we're going to learn about as you um, do your presentations for all of us. You'll get to think about the ways that you're going to really apply this information in your life um, to make your life better. And that's what certainly gets me really excited. All right. So that is positive mindset. Mark, I will change my screen over to you. Okay. Um... Let me make sure I've got something worth looking at. <laughs> there we go. Okay, thanks a lot, Al. 